It is Class Creatives and in this video we'll discuss how we created fully animated sequences from concept to final render with Autodesk Maya and Blender's Grease Pencil. Thanks to your valuable feedback, we are expanding our Blender Grease Pencil production workflows for beginners course with some new exciting cinematic visual installments. In these updates, we hope to share with you some additional workflows to add to your Blender Grease Pencil projects. Many of our students are curious about how to get started with Maya for rigging and animation, along with how Blender's Grease Pencil fits into the pipeline for a professional workflow which is being introduced at some of the top studios. We hope this video will help clarify why 3D animation is still created in Maya by studios, online instructors, and academic institutions, as well as how Blender's Grease Pencil is revolutionizing the production workflow for 3D renderings. In this video, we'll cover the exact workflows of how some of the best studios in the world create animations with Maya Autodesk, and then use Blender's Grease Pencil to create extremely stylized and unique visuals that are transforming the 3D asset creation process. We hope this video will help highlight additional workflows you can apply to your own projects and how to use Autodesk Maya mixed with Blender's tool sets and why the top studios have started to adapt this innovative groundbreaking process to elevate their 3D animated visuals with stylized 2D hand-drawn elements. <laughs> to accomplish the graphic look like that of the Spider-Verse, in Blender, we want to capture a very specific style and we want to keep that in mind as we work in Blender Grease Pencil. For our workflow, we are following the process used by Sony Pictures Animation using Autodesk Maya for 3D animation and rigging. Of course, you can animate in Blender as well. But for this unique project and workflow, we wanted to showcase how to work inside Maya for animation and rigging and to bring all of those assets to Blender for Grease Pencil line work. We'll animate the vehicle, character, and camera in Maya and export them to Blender. We'll be using the Toon Shader to give the comic book feel to all of the 3D assets. For the lighting, we use a key light that follows the character and the vehicle. We use an overall light to emulate sunlight, which provides overall shadows in the scene. We built the environment around the animation, starting with simple blocks for buildings. We used basic textures, focusing on the outlines and silhouettes. We added speed lines to the animation using shaders, and to create dynamic shadows, we used geometric planes. For the outlines, we used a new technique, creating a grease pencil object using blend and stroke. We then applied modifiers such as line art, tint, offset, length, and thickness to create line variations and thicken the outline slightly. We also adjusted the opacity to make the lines more organic. We then separated the grease pencil objects for each element, such as the bridge and the character, for better control over all the details. We rendered the final animation with some post-processing in Photoshop to complete the desired look. This approach pushes the animation beyond its original style, creating a more abstract and powerful effect. This workflow allows you to manipulate the timing and the keyframes to push the creative style. From there we export all the layers together for the final shot. Once we imported the sequences into Photoshop, we meticulously drew subtle elements over each frame to create a more dynamic effect, further enhancing the animation through subtle adjustment to individual frames. When the frames are combined, the individual hand-painted frames give more energy and visual impact. Our goal was to create a graphic energetic style rather than a realistic one. We experimented with what we call impact frames, similar to what is seen in the Spider-Verse. These are frames where we want to exaggerate or manipulate the animation, sometimes holding a pose longer, other times speeding it up. The entire texture painting process can all be completed directly in Blender without relying on Photoshop. We first need to prepare the mesh, unwrapping each element individually. Although this method might seem time consuming, it provides greater flexibility later on in the process. You can choose between various techniques, like UV mapping or even texture painting directly within Blender using Grease Pencil. We set up the camera and adjusted the animation to ensure it plays at the correct speed. We imported custom brushes to add visual interest and textures to the strokes. We aim for an approach that has the effects of sketching or comic book inking, focusing on creating a rough and organic look. We intentionally avoided painting shadows directly onto the model. Since we are using a diffuse shader that already provides some subtle shading, adding strong shadows would limit the interactivity with the lighting. This approach requires careful consideration to detail. So if you know precisely how the scene will be lit, you can confidently paint shadows. However, this can limit the flexibility of the model. Ultimately, the best approach depends on your specific needs and artistic vision. 
When we started introducing color to the scene, we kept a layer structure having the outline layer on top, the base layer at the bottom, and the color layer in the middle. We set all the layers to diffuse so that they react to the light source in the scene. Even though we are adding color, we maintain a sense of depth by keeping the base layer at the bottom and painting brighter colors on the top layer. We adjusted the brush settings, specifically the pressure and strength, to control how the color is applied. For this more graphic style, we chose to have a more opaque look by keeping the opacity relatively low. We used a Veroni texture with color ramp and crunch node to create a comic book style dot effect. We used the tune shader as a mask for the dot effect. This allowed us to apply the dot pattern only to the shadowed areas of the model. The tune shader's greater than node and the color ramp can be set to customize the amount of halftones shadows on your mesh. The mixed color node was used to multiply the halftone on the base color texture. You can experiment with the best approach for your project, but this is the general idea for adding a halftone effect to the shadows. For the background buildings, we kept the modeling shape simple. We added some slight distortions to the edges of the buildings to give them a more stylized look, while also adding noise to the background to add visual interest. The final elements we added to the shot included the speed lines and the clouds in the background. We also experimented with some of the new bloom effect features that were recently added to Blender. We targeted a warmer color palette. Keep in mind that with grease pencil, the stroke thickness is affected by the surface it's drawn on. If you adjust the grease pencil surface and then move the cursor closer to the surface, the stroke will become thinner. Typically we prefer to work with grease pencil in 3D space. This allows for parallax effects and gives more control over the placement of strokes. We set the plane to view so that the grease pencil strokes will always face the camera, regardless of their position in 3D space. This helps to accurately place strokes on specific parts of the scene. We use the fill tool to create the cloud effect, while also using multiple grease pencil layers, one for wires, one for clouds, and also to keep the scene's workflow organized. To focus on the painting and to avoid distractions, you may prefer to work with minimal overlays in the viewport. These techniques helped us create and achieve a dynamic and visually interesting set of effects using grease pencil with the Blender environment. Quick pause to tell you a little bit about Class Creatives. We'll help you take your 3D and 2D art to the next level. Learn from industry professionals with experience teaching at accredited universities. Land that new job, receive higher pay, and stand out from the competition. The great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today for free with the link in the description. For this new sequence, we took inspiration from a trip to Japan, riding the Yurakamome monorail line across the Rainbow Bridge in Tokyo. We used video footage shot on location for reference to incorporate a cityscape with vehicles. We experimented with several Blender grease pencil techniques to ensure our ideas would work on the final shots. We rigged our humanoid character with Advanced Skeleton for Autodesk Maya, so that we could import any motion capture or previously keyframed animation from other projects we have done for our internal projects. We also followed the Unreal Mannequin skeletal hierarchy for the skeleton so that we could easily import and export animations that are compatible with the Unreal Mannequin. This also ensured we could export our character mesh, skeleton, and animations to Unreal Engine in the future if we needed that workflow. Note that you could also follow along through our M-Gear rigging course if you want a free auto-rigging open source professional tool that also is compatible with Unreal Engine and Autodesk Maya. Of course we could also have animated the character in Blender, but we wanted to show the workflows used for professional studio projects like Sony Pictures Spider-Verse as we received a lot of requests from our students to cover the Autodesk Maya and Blender grease pencil workflow. For the vehicle we rigged and constrained it in Autodesk Maya. We also attached it to a motion path so we could easily change the curves and animate it as we needed for specific shots. For more custom shots, we also have the vehicle rigged for off the motion path rigging, so it has the full flexibility that we need for the animation team to do their best work for all situations that the project will require. Once the animation is complete, we can export the vehicle and the rig for full integration into Blender, or even Unreal Engine depending on the project needs. To animate the character and the vehicle, we took a few shots from Akira as examples to demonstrate how to animate the character along a motion path, and add some secondary animation on the character riding the vehicle. 
We felt that a few similar shots would allow our students to see how to use video reference to build shot sequences and how to bring their own spin to the visuals by bringing in the 3D assets to Blender and giving their own personal touch to the shots. It's not uncommon for a lot of big movie productions to borrow from classic shots and bring some new elements to iconic classic material. We also implemented some automatic rigging to animate some of the vehicle engine parts, exhaust, and other secondary mechanical animations to add some extra life to the shots. By using the image plane references, we can quickly block in our cinematic cameras, rough in the vehicle timing and placement, and then polish up the animation as we see fit for the sequence of shots. We'll also add some additional sequences from our storyboards that will require a mix of various types of video references and stylization to get everything looking the way the director of the project will want all of the sequences to unfold to match the overall vision of the cinematography. We utilized the Wacom Move Ink and Cintiq for the Blender Grease Pencil and 2D animation effects enhanced in Photoshop to create the final look of all the shots. We also recently upgraded to the new Intuos Pro that we also use for 3D animation in Maya for ergonomics and efficiency. We love animating in Maya with Wacom tablets instead of a mouse for precision and to prevent carpal tunnel. Within the Wacom tablet properties, the pen can be adjusted and customized so that the right and middle click buttons are triggered on the pen's buttons. Another setting to check out in the Wacom properties is the mapping. By changing the mode from pen to mouse, the tablet will act more like your familiar mouse movements versus the pen mode being mapped to your screen. The advantage by having it set to mouse is so that your wrist and arm are not in the same position at all times. What's really great is that you can use the Intuos Pro with all three pens. Well, that about wraps up this video on how to utilize Autodesk Maya for rigging and animation while incorporating Blender's Grease Pencil to push the visual stylization of your 3D projects. We hope insights into this production workflow will help you embrace new tools and push workflows to their limits to create unique 3D visual content. We plan on continuing updates on this visual cinematic project while sharing with you how to use both Maya and Blender for production and how you can also follow this exciting workflow for your own creations. Are you using Maya along with Blender's Grease Pencil for your personal projects or as a working professional at your studio? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect.